Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotac, an iOS 17.0.2 release to the public this past week on devices that weren't just iPhone 15s. We also got iOS 17.1 beta one in the first version since iOS 17 to have a major beta update. There's more features to talk about with iOS 17.1 beta one since the initial what's new video. We'll also talk about the overall experience, not just my experience, but your experience based off the YouTube community poll, where again today there's an incredible amount of votes, 28,000 votes at the time of this video and hundreds of comments, 233 comments. I've gone through all of them to determine what the overall experience is like from battery life and much more. Now, the first thing is a little bit of news, and then we'll talk about new features. Now, iPhone 12 apparently had some issues with RF in France. It went beyond their limits where the RF radiation levels were higher than they actually allowed in France. This apparently is being fixed with an update coming very soon. That was just approved by the French regulatory authorities. So we could see a new update this coming week with maybe iOS 17.0.3, but we'll talk more about that a little bit later. Now, starting today, Apple cash recurring payments is rolling out across iOS 17 in the USA. At least it may be available in other countries as well. But if we go into the Apple wallet app and within the Apple cash card within the Apple wallet app, tap the three dots in the upper right, then tap on recurring payments. You can now set these up. And the first time you open this, you'll probably see a splash screen, but now we can tap new recurring payment add a debit card and then set up a recurring payment if you want to directly from your bank account. So this is rolling out in the USA, possibly some other countries. Let me know if you're seeing it in the comments below to go along with Apple wallet. Apple is actually opening this up to open banking protocols in the UK and iOS 17.1. You can see account balances and more as you'll see, I typed this on Twitter or X here. And again, thanks to James for sharing this with me. But if you're in the UK, you'll be able to add different information here and see it all in one place. We're not seeing this anywhere outside of this area yet. So hopefully they bring this to more areas. You can see Starling bank connected and you can now view account information for this card in the wallet. Would love to see this elsewhere as well. Now this past week, Apple also released the first beta update of watch OS watch OS 10.1 is now available and it now has the new name drop feature built in. You can actually see this by going into your settings. So if you have this update installed, we'll go into settings here scroll down and within settings, tap on contacts and you'll see an option for name drop. This won't be here if you're not on 10.1 beta one. If you are now you can just bring this close to your iPhone and you'll actually see it go into name drop. So let me go out of the settings. I was able to replicate this earlier. I'll put in my password. There we go. If we bring it close together, it says connected. However, I'm not able to open the contact. Maybe it's because it's paired to this iPhone, but either way it actually works when you bring it close to your phone now. So that's great. I'm sure they'll refine it a little bit more over the next few betas. Now, as far as new features, changes and updates with iOS 17.1, let's get rid of that. 17.1 adds a couple changes. One of them has to do with the wallpaper. If we go in and set a wallpaper, and if we use the wallpaper from today, pull down, you'll see it says wallpaper extended. However, if we tap on the options here in the bottom, right, we have the option now to extend the wallpaper. So no longer do we just have to pinch and move it up or down. It will extend it just by tapping this button here. So it's a nice little update where it makes it a little more clear as to what it's doing with Apple music this week with iOS 17.1 beta one, we got the new favorites playlist that we've been waiting for since Apple announced it with iOS 17. Now that it's in this beta, there's more to go along with that. So if you're creating a playlist, maybe we'll go to my Shazam tracks playlist, tap the three dots in the upper right, go to edit. They now suggest different album artwork here. You can add your own with a photo or just pick from one that they've actually suggested here. So if we want to change it to one tap done and it changes to that. So it's a nice little update. If you want to fully customize your playlists. Additionally, if you favorite a playlist, so press and hold, maybe favorite this playlist, tap the three line menu in the upper right, then tap on favorited. It will sort of pin those to the top for you, making it much easier to access. So these are really nice changes, very simple, but definitely welcome and easier to find the music you want to listen to. Now with podcasts, Apple has mentioned with iOS 17 that they were going to add a nice way to actually find different news that you have in your news app, but within podcasts. So if we go into news, 
Under your audio tab in your news app, you have all of these different stories you can listen to. Within the podcast app, they're making that more prominent. So if we go into podcasts, you'll see it says top shows from Apple News. So this is finally showing up. It wasn't showing up for me in iOS 17. So we can listen to daily news, news, news and conversation, and it puts it toward the top as you were just in news. So maybe you want to see that here. Within shortcuts, Apple has actually removed something. So maybe we'll create a shortcut, add an action. One of the actions we had before was the option to silent your phone or go into silent mode. So if you go into silent mode, you'll see set silent mode, but it's for the Apple Watch. It's not for the iPhone. So we can set a silent mode here, turn it on or off. But again, it's only showing for the Apple Watch, not for the iPhone. They'll probably add this back later, just like all of those ringtones and text tones, but it's not showing up for many people. Also, CarPlay gets a slight change. So I'll go ahead and plug in my iPhone with Apple CarPlay. I'll need to change the cable as I'm still using Lightning here, but we'll wait for it to connect. And once it connects, if we go over to our settings, within settings, if we go to wallpaper, there's a change with the white and dark mode wallpaper. So it doesn't look as nice. It's sort of more of a gray, has a different tone to it. Of course, you can change it to any of the others, but these actually look a little bit different depending on which one you're using. So maybe not as nice as it was before. Hopefully they'll actually change it. So the gray and white theme has a different look to it. It used to look a little bit darker. Apple Books has been updated slightly in that read now used to say reading now. So it's a slight change there. Also something we can't see unless you have one of these is in iOS 17.1, there's now support for the Nintendo Switch N64 controller. So if you have one of them or you're getting one of those, you'll be able to use it with this. Also within the code, you can now report FaceTime calls as junk. I haven't seen this pop up as I don't get a lot of phone calls, but if you get one in your FaceTime app and it's from someone you don't know, you can report it as junk to Apple. Additionally in the code, you'll see that according to Steve Mosier, there's actually not only what I mentioned before, but also journaling suggestions. Hopefully we're going to get the journaling app with future versions of iOS 17. I would expect that so far they're not available yet, but probably in 17.1 beta two or something else along those lines, we'll probably see it. Now, speaking of the iPhone 15 pro and pro max, I talked about this at length in my what's new video, as far as the unboxing, as well as the overall review since using it for a week, as far as overheating, I've had zero issues with the iPhone 15 pro max overheating, whether that's connected through USB C charging while playing a game, anything else. I've not gotten this to get very hot. We'll check it a little bit later in the video when we talk about heat, but so far it's stayed nice and cool. Not everyone is experiencing this. And the problem is we don't really know what software versions they're on, what part of the country they're in, what ambient temperatures they're in. There's a lot of factors to figure this out. And once Apple does, maybe they'll make a statement on it, but we don't really know as it's hard to say until they actually get more data and figure out if it's a subset of iPhones, a ton of iPhones or what a lot of people are just posting that. Yes, it got hot, but people are not seeing the overheat message necessarily. Some are, but if you're not seeing that message, it's okay that it gets warm. It's not okay if you can't touch it. So hopefully we'll see some resolution to this, maybe just with a software update or something else. Now, as far as Apple's upcoming events, usually every year we have an October event or some sort of announcement in October. Lately, we've been hearing that there would be no event, but maybe we'll have some new iPads like we do every year. We could get an iPad mini. So we could get an updated iPad mini, maybe with some new chipsets inside, maybe an updated display, and maybe we'll get an updated iPad air. The regular iPad was updated last year as well. So again, we'll have to wait and see, but I don't think there'll be any regular event, maybe just an announcement with some new releases. We typically see that every year. I wouldn't expect any Macs, at least so far anyway. And as far as upcoming releases, iOS 17.0.3 could come out this week, like I mentioned earlier, to fix those issues with the RF levels with iPhone 12 models. So that's something we could see maybe earlier or later next week. I would not expect iOS 17.1 beta two next week, as usually early betas are every two weeks. However, last year we had about four betas. They varied this quite a bit and we're about a week behind what we were last year. So we may not see a final release of iOS 17.1 until November, but we'll have to wait and see as Apple changes this all the time, but we're getting quite a few little updates in between. Now, as far as the overall experience with iOS 17.0.3, the regular public release, most people are saying that it's very stable. 
It's better than most have said with iOS 17 with battery life and fixes most of the issues. It was typically only for fixing transferring information from a 14 Pro Max or older phone to an iPhone 15 series phone. So that's really what it was there to fix. It seems like it's done that. However, some people report it's got better battery life. So we don't really know until people use it for a little bit longer, but it seems better overall and very stable. And we'll take a look at some of your comments in a moment. As far as camera improvements, there's no additional camera improvements to the iPhone 14 series or older that I can tell. The 15 series takes phenomenal photos. I'm very impressed with it. Seems to be a big improvement over the 14 series with the pro phones. So I'm happy about that. I'll probably test that in comparisons later on with different videos, but so far I'm very impressed with some of the photos you'll see here. It looks great takes great photos at night. They look better than the 14 Pro and Pro Max. So, so far, I don't know if it's just the A17 Pro or the cameras themselves or a combination of both, but either way, I'm pretty impressed with it overall. As far as connectivity, some people have said that the 15 series phones have poor connectivity. I've actually experienced the opposite. I find it to be much better than the 14 series phones as it has a new Qualcomm modem in it. That seems to be much better for me in my experience so far. It's not disconnecting anywhere where it normally would with the 14 series phones. I'm pretty happy with that overall. As far as bugs that they've fixed with iOS 17.1 beta one, let's go into the feedback app. And in the notes, you can see there's a couple resolved issues. They fixed the remote widgets on Mac OS Sonoma, sort of going blank and unresponsive when they're actually only on your iPhone. Those are working better. There's still some known issues with Apple Wallet, but there's not a whole lot mentioned in here. Just some known issues, a few with Wallet and Apple Pay, and then widget kit. And that's about it. Everything else is resolved issues. So maybe they'll give more information in future updates, but that's pretty good. And I'm actually seeing that with overall bugs this time around. There's only a couple that remain the notification bug. Not everyone seems to have that, but it's still here for me. So you can see that here, definitely an issue for some people. It's not a usability issue. It's just more of an annoyance. And I mentioned how, when you do this and then maybe go back to a different page, it really sort of gets choppy when you do that with the frame rate that's supposedly going to be fixed in an upcoming update based on some feedback that a regular viewer sent me. Also, some have said that airdrop isn't working well for them. It's actually working very well for me. That doesn't mean everyone has the same experience, but you'll see it works pretty quick drops right over. Or if I just want to send it to my iPad, the same thing takes a second and jumps right over to my iPad. No issues there whatsoever. It's nice and fast and I really haven't experienced that. Some have seen keyboard lag. So if you're in notes or some other app, this is the keyboard. I haven't had any lag whatsoever with this. It's been nice and fast, but some people even on the latest phones are seeing that keyboard lag. If you are, I would recommend rebooting it and seeing if that fixes it. Additionally, everything else seems to be performing pretty well. I've had no issues whatsoever with performance other than those stutters I just showed you, just opening apps, going into different applications, closing out of them, scrolling, ProMotion seems improved. Everything is fast. Of course, this is a 15 Pro Max, but even on the other phones, this isn't that old, 14 Pro Max, but either way, it seems to be nice and fast for most things. And I do have a couple suggestions as far as apps with performance or just battery life in general. Most people that I've seen have problems. They've said that Instagram was causing them a lot of battery drain. We'll talk about that in a moment. They've also said that WhatsApp is doing the same thing with slowness or battery drains or the phone getting very hot. So going along with performance, like I said, I haven't had the phone heat up very much. The phone's nice and cool to the touch right now. And I can show you that with both with the thermal camera. I would say it is slightly warmer than the 14 Pro Max right now, but let's take a look. So use this device here first. We'll use a thermometer. It's a little bit warm there, 84 degrees Fahrenheit or 28.6 degrees Celsius. Over here, we have 31.0 or 87 or 88.5. So I'm seeing about a two to three degree increase on the 15 Pro Max over the 14 Pro Max. Nothing huge, but definitely an increase. Now the hotter portion of the phone tends to be the front of the phone. So let's take a look on the 15 Pro Max and it's not too hot, 86.8 degrees or 87 degrees Fahrenheit. The other phone is definitely cooler at about four degrees cooler or five degrees cooler at 79.9. If we flip it back over again, that's where we see this, the increase depending on the device. So again, you'll see the different heat signatures. Of course, we've been using the 15 pro max more, but we're at almost 90 degrees Fahrenheit. And then again, on the other phone, 
about 5 degrees cooler at 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, granted, we haven't been using it as much, but typically I'm seeing about 5 degrees difference. Now, that's also playing games as well. I played games last night, Call of Duty, PUBG Mobile, and Genshin Impact for about 35 minutes total, and I was able to use the phone fine without it getting too hot. Now, as far as the overall battery life, my battery life has been better than it has been on the 14 Pro Max after I uninstalled Instagram. So if we go into settings, go to battery, battery health and charging, of course we have 100%. And let's quickly take a look at my battery cycles on this phone. So we'll go to about, and you'll see we have nine cycles of the battery on this phone. So that's quite a lot in just a week or so, but we have nine cycles, again, back to battery. On the other device here, and I'll show you the battery stats for both using coconut battery. But if we go down to battery, battery health and charging, my 14 Pro Max after a year of use is 87% with 309 cycles. Now, as far as battery life overall, we'll take a look on both. I should still have a couple days left. The last full day, I had four hours and 15 minutes of screen active time at 100% usage on my 14 Pro Max. Yesterday, I went a little over 100% and had five hours and 14 minutes. The day before, I didn't charge it at all and had six hours and 16 minutes of screen active time. The odd thing here is that Safari is using 24% of my battery and there's nothing even open in Safari. If I go into Safari, you'll see I really don't have anything here. I had the wallpaper from before, but that was it. If I go into private browsing, there's nothing there either. There's just nothing that should be using that much power. So I haven't figured that one out yet, but hopefully that gets resolved soon. But battery life in general has been pretty good for most people on 17.1 and 17.0.3. However, watch OS 10, many people are complaining, especially on the Apple Watch Ultra with battery being poor. So that might need another update to address that. Now, as far as if you should install iOS 17.1 beta one, I would say skip it at this point. There's not enough features in it yet to justify maybe having additional bugs. But if you do have bugs, make sure you report them in feedback. But either way, I would probably skip it at this point and wait maybe for beta two or three and see how it is as far as stability. As far as iOS 17.0.3, if you haven't installed that already, definitely do that. It's just a bug fix update. Most people aren't going to notice any difference whatsoever there. It just fixes the bugs, gets you up to date, and you're ready to go there. Now, as far as what you had to say based on the YouTube community poll, let's take a look at that. So we'll read a couple from iOS 17.0.2 first. This is from Quad Rider Honda. He said, using iOS 17.0.2 on my 15 Pro Max. It's been great for me. Phone stays cool, performance is snappy, and it's been very smooth. Battery also pretty good with no complaints here. Mr. Austin Felt said, I'm running iOS 17.0.2 on my iPhone 13 mini, and my experience has been fantastic. Although there's a bug when I tapped on download all tones, my purchased ringtones were gone. I really hope that Apple can fix this bug as soon as possible. I love your content so much, Aaron. Keep it up. Thank you. Arter1789 says iOS 17.1 battery life is way better on 14 Pro Max. 17.0.2 was like on 16.1. At Scott Hagel, 3254 says, and hopefully I'm pronouncing that properly, iPhone 12 Pro running iOS 17.1 beta. So far, 17.1 beta has been running great. The phone is fast and smooth, battery life is very good, and Wi-Fi slash cellular connectivity is good. The only bug I have seen is when I run a shortcut, I quickly see a translucent ghost screen screen that appears over the shortcut widget. The translucent ghost screen will appear for a fraction of a second, then disappear. And so that's everything with iOS 17.0.2 and iOS 17.1 beta one. Hopefully we get a new beta with even more features, that journaling app hopefully, and hopefully we also get 17.0.3 that fixes more than just one issue, and Apple actually describes what they're fixing this time. I hope they really focus on improvements this year. Let me know if you found anything else though in iOS 17.1. And if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.